Hey guys. All right. So another question that was that was emailed to me was um, find two consecutive integers such that their product is 143 more than five times their sum. Always love these problems. Um, well, first things first. I'm. I just noticed the typo. Consecutive odd integers. Apologies. So find two consecutive odd integers such that their product is 143 more than five times their sum. Now, what in the world does consecutive mean? Well, a consecutive number, well, that's like one, two, three, four. It's that pattern. A consecutive odd integer, well, if you go back to elementary school, if you remember odds and even numbers, even numbers were two, four, six, eight, ten, so on and so forth. Odd numbers, consecutive odd numbers, one, four. 3, 5, 7, 9, so on. The, the odd numbers are right next to each other. And that's what the word consecutive means. Okay, so in order to figure out what two, or what consecutive odd integers are, well, this is where things start getting a little funky because this is when we start dealing with letters in math. I know how much you guys love letters. Let's say, for example, I'm going to be very careful on this one. One odd integer is x. I know. Got to love x. To find the next odd integer, well, let's say, well, let's take, for example, uh, 3. Let's say we say 3 is x. Well, to get to the next odd integer going up, well, it wouldn't be 4. It would be 5. So we have to add two regular numbers to get to the next one. Same way if our odd integer was 9. Okay, so to get to the next odd integer, we have to add two more numbers. So basically, to get to the next odd integer, we keep on adding two numbers. In other words, to generalize this, if our odd number is x, then our next odd number would be x plus 2. Alright, so that's what I mean by two consecutive odd integers, x, then x plus 2. Their product of the consecutive integers is x times x plus 2. It sets up their product. Okay, so we've only done to where my hand is right here. Two consecutive integers such that their product. That's why we take x times x plus 2. Alright, now, the word is... Well, that translates to the equal sign in mathematics. All right. Now, in order for us to go on, now we have to translate this last part. 143 more than 5 times their sum. All right. So, 143 more than, well, that translates to a addition that translates to a plus sign five times the sum of the two consecutive integers in other words five times you take your two consecutive integers and you add them up so there's our first consecutive integer x and then our next consecutive integer x plus two we're adding the two integers together and we're multiplying them by 5 because that's 5 times our sum. Try to say consecutive 5 times fast. Ooh, that's a tough one. The hardest part about setting, uh, the hardest part about these kind of things, the hardest part about really any kind of math problem is translating from words to mathy language, math jargon, uh, math jargon. There we go. That's the hardest part for any math student. That's the hardest part for just about anybody. All right, so. You just got to take it piece by piece. That's why we did the first part right up here, you know, from this first sentence to where my hand is, and then is, that was the dividing line, and then we took care of this last part. The, like I said, the trickiest part is actually translating from words to math. I know all of you can read, and I know all of you can solve equations, but connecting that gap, connecting that bridge, that's where a lot of students struggle with. So once we get over that bridge, now we can start solving our equation. Well, over here, the x times x plus 2, 
Well, that gets us, well, when we distribute, x squared plus 2x. Over here, 143 plus, I'm going to simplify the stuff inside my parentheses first before I multiply. So that means I would have a 2x plus 2. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and multiply the stuff I have inside this parentheses. I'm going to leave everything else alone for now. So 5 times 2x, well, that gets us a 10x. 5 times 2, just a plain old 10. Okay. You notice anything? We have an exponent of 2. Anytime you have an exponent of 2, automatically think you got a quadratic equation. Automatically think you got to have your equation equal to zero. You got to put it in standard form. Some advice that I would recommend. Most people, most students, like having their x squared term to be positive. Why? It makes it easier to factor if you can factor. It makes it a whole lot easier in the long run. So basically, what we're going to do, we're going to take all this stuff right here and move it to the other side. All right, now in the process, I'm also going to clean up this right-hand side, if you're okay with that. So this would be x squared plus 2x equals 143 plus 10, well that gets us 153 plus 10x. All right, so now I'm going to start moving stuff across the equal sign. So here, I'm going to move the 153 plus 10x over to the other side. Take me to the other side. Oh, I, I tried to do Aerosmith. I couldn't, couldn't do it. So I'm going to subtract 10x from both sides, and I'm going to subtract 153 from both sides. So when I do this, subtract 10x on both sides. Well, a 2 minus 10x, well, that gets us a minus 8x. And then subtract 153. That gets me a minus 153 on both sides equal to zero. All right. Now, here's where you have to go through your times tables and kind of play around with it because it does take a little bit of trickery. What times what will multiply to 153 that will subtract to a negative 8x? That's an interesting one. Hmm, let's see here. Let's go through the calculations. Well, what times what will give us 153 first? Let's list out all the possibilities. Okay. So, well, the easiest one is 153. 1 and 153. That's always the, the go-to one. Well, 153 is odd, so it's not divisible by 2. Aha. 3 and 51, still not divisible by 4, not divisible by 5, is it divisible by 6, no, it's divisible by 9, so it's 17. Okay, and you can keep on going if you like. I'm gonna, I mean, I saw, I saw where it was. I just want to kind of play that one out. So if you can keep on going, figure out the list, hey, by all means, go for it. I will say this, though, that the list is not going to be too much longer. I think maybe there's one more. Let me think here. Nope, I don't think there's another one. Okay, so I, that's the list right there. So in order for us to figure out what times what gives us 153? That would subtract to a negative 8x. Well, 1 and 153, there's no possible way that can give you a negative 8x. 3 and 51, and eh, no, not really. You can't add or subtract those to get negative 8x. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. 9 and 17. Yeah, there's some possible way that 9 and 17 can 
subtract to a negative 8 somehow. Well, 17 minus 9, well, that gets you a positive 8. There we go. We're getting close. So we got to figure it out. We got to see which one will actually work. All right, so I'm just going to put my factors here, put it close to the equation. Well, what times what gives us an x? x and x. Okay. Now, what times what will give us 153 that would subtract to a negative 8? Well, we kind of already had the idea. Where's my marker? Ah, green marker. We kind of had the idea that we're going to pick 9 and 17 from that list. Okay. So, how can we get 9 and 17 and a negative 8? Well, 17 minus 9, well, that gets us an 8, positive 8. Well, what if we flip the signs? What about a negative 17 plus 9? There you go. That gets us your negative 8. So that would be a x minus 17 and an x plus 9. All right. Of course, you can foil it out. And I, I'm actually going to do it on this case. So if I FOIL, just to check, x times x, x squared, x times 9, positive 9x, nine negative 17 times x, minus 17x, negative 17 times a positive 9, negative 153. Guess what? We get the equation that we started off with. That verifies that checks to make sure that we factored it correctly. Okay? It would not be a bad idea to get to that half. Okay, so once we get here, once we have our factors equal to zero, we set each one equal to zero. So that means we would have an x minus 17 equals zero and x plus 9 equals zero. So solving each little equation, add 17 to both sides, so you get x is 17. And then here, subtract 9 from both sides. x is negative 9. Okay. Guess what? We found our x values. But still not done yet. We still have to find two consecutive odd integers. But here's the tricky part. Here's where I can, I can definitely see where students are messing up on. That question is actually deceiving. Very deceiving. Because it says find two consecutive odd integers. Let me uh, kind of sort of break the news to you. Technically, it's going to be four. Okay? Now, you're probably wondering, well, that's kind of weird. Why would they do that? Well, we math people love to mess with people. I'm not going to lie. So, We've got two cases. Well, we have one case where you start off with 17 as your integer. <coughs> Excuse me. So if 17 is our odd integer, how do we get to the next one? Well, we add 2 to it. So the next guy is 19. So our list right now is 17 comma 19. There's two integers right there. But we still have this case of the negative 9 to deal with. All right, so that was case 1. This would be case 2. If your x value is a negative 9, well, think negatives. You're going to have to go backwards. To go from a negative 9 to your next odd integer going down, Right. Just realized that thing looks like it looks like it's giving me a man bun. My eraser back here. Ah. So to go from a negative nine to your next odd integer, you subtract two. So you you go down. So a negative nine to get to your next odd integer would be a negative eleven. So in this case, the next guy is negative eleven. So now we add two more numbers to our list, negative 9 and negative 11. This would be your final answer. 
Okay, these are the consecutive odd integers. Like I said, that problem is a little deceiving. Okay. Oh. Yet again, I made a mistake. I was I was too confused with my man black. I apologize on that. I did not follow our formula that we had. Okay. Our formula for consecutive odd integers was x and x plus 2. That was my mistake. So we have our odd integer, which is negative 9. By following the formula, if we add 2 to that one, so a negative 9 plus 2, that should give us a negative 7. We had to follow the formula for consecutive odd integers, for consecutive integers. So that would be your final answer right there. Like I said, I was too focused on my man bun over there. So that's why I said this problem can be a little deceiving because it says two consecutive odd integers. But technically, you're going to end up with four consecutive odd integers if you want to think about it. So um, I can definitely see where students can get a little confused on that one. But... The hardest part, literally the hardest part, and this happens a lot, is going from the words to the equation. Okay, if you want to, we'll actually, I'll actually go through it one more time. Because, like, like I said, that's the hardest part. Two consecutive odd integers such that their product. All right, consecutive two consecutive odd integers. Well, that's where the x and the x plus two comes from. Why they're multiplied is from this word, product. That's why they're multiplied. The word is is your equal sign. Then 143, more than, there's your positive sign right there. Five times, that's where the five times, the sum of the two consecutive integers. The first guy plus the second guy. First guy plus the second guy. Like I said, that's the hardest part about any kind of math problem, is translating it from words to equations. Okay, so as always, let me know if you guys have any questions of any kind. Um, I'm happy to help. Um, next time I might have a man button on me. You never know. So, but yeah, just let me know if y'all need anything. I'm happy to help. You know, uh, and keep working hard, guys.